Hello, reporter room investigators. My name is Jessica Della Davies. I'm an investigative journalist. My job is to investigate crimes, potential suspects, and criminals, and show you how to consider suspects, crime scenes, and evidence. Everything I'm sharing with you is my opinion, and opinions are not facts. So please subscribe, smash the like button, and leave me a comment. Thank you to our subscribers, our mods, our channel members. Our channel members are the ones with the red, green, and blue verified check mark. So today we're going to be talking about the Sebastian Rogers case. We're going to be going through the timeline, some early interviews, and some big red flags in this case together. So come on in, come on in. Hey, Cirrus. Hi, Tara. Hi, Spirit Walker. Hi, Deborah. Go ahead and share this on your socials. This is uh, the first time I've done a Sebastian Rogers video, so I don't know how it's going to go, but we'll, I, I have a lot of great information to share with you. So for those of you who don't know what I'm talking about, because I've been covering this, um, we're going to start off just quickly with a little overview. Sebastian Rogers is a 15 year old. He went missing out of Tennessee on February 26th. Specifically, he went missing from his Henderson Ville, Tennessee house. This is about 18 miles northeast of Nashville. And the community has been in the true crime community here on YouTube has been actively looking for him. So Sabeth, Seth, Sebastian's father, Seth Rogers has been speaking out and he's described you guys as Sebastian's army. Um, and I think that's true. He said that we will find him. We will find him alive. We will find him well. And they've been handing out flyers. This is his father. Now there is a stepfather and Sebastian was in the custody of his mother and stepfather at the time of his disappearance. And there've been a lot of inconsistencies with Katie and Chris Proudfoot. These are the step parents of Sebastian Rogers. So first of all, we have some big concerns in this case um, that put, in my opinion, Sebastian at a higher risk of something negative happening to him, some higher risk involved with this abduction. We have a stepfather who is in the house. We have a CPS that has, we have CPS that's already been involved with this particular stepfather. I'm talking about Chris Proudfoot. This is alleged. And the fact that the mother Katie Proudfoot did not speak out right away. We have some more red flags. The stepfather seems to be combative and he seems to enjoy it. So he not only likes to argue and, and, uh, and spar verbally with people, but he actually enjoys it. This is a concern. And the other thing is that Sebastian is a special needs child. He has autism. And if you don't know already, April is Autism Awareness Month. So both the mother and the stepfather moved away from their house while Sebastian, after Sebastian went missing. So come on in guys, come on in. Um, let's, I'm going to just do a very brief overview because some people are not familiar with this case. And then I'm going to go into some of the early interviews. So, this, on the, the day Sebastian disappeared, his mother, Katie Fow Proudfoot, this is according to her, went to wake up Sebastian. This was on February 26th, only to find him missing. She said he fell asleep in his bed the night before, and she was shocked to find him gone. Now, she said that she called, not the police, she called her husband after not being able to locate Sebastian. She said, I can't find him. And he says, what do you mean you can't find him? He's not in the house, she answered. Hmm. So authorities have committed to the search for Sebastian. Multiple different agencies have been looking for him. Um, but it's but it's very, very interesting um, the, some of the inconsistencies that we have, and we're going to look at one of the earlier interviews that the parents did and go through that. So we also know that there were glasses found matching those that Sebastian wears. However, those were not Sebastian's glasses. And Seth Rogers is 
is uh, not the stepfather, but the actual father. And he spoke out to Nancy Grace on her show and revealed that Sebastian expressed not wanting to go to his mother's home shortly before he disappeared. And he said, he asked him, why don't you want to go back? And according to Seth Rogers, he wouldn't tell him. He didn't say why. He just said he didn't want to go back. Now, I don't know how verbal um, Sebastian was. Um, so Sebastian's mother, Katie Proudfoot, and her husband, Chris Proudfoot, have been facing allegations of hitting the teen at least one time. We know that Chris Proudfoot has had CPS involved in his own past. He admits to doing it once. We caught him in a lie, though, because we know there's at least one other time where he had done it. Um, they said that it happened as the result of lying, but I can't imagine doing this to a special needs child, in my opinion. So, Sebastian. We're all going to be on the lookout for him. He's five feet, five inches tall, 120 pounds with dirty blonde hair. He was last seen Monday, February 26th at the Stratford court wearing a black sweatshirt and black sweatpants. So were those clothes missing from the house? A lot of people have been asking this. And last night on the Dave Pascal show, Seth Rogers called in and he wanted to know Dave told them to, to ask about those black sweatshirt and black pants. And we heard this pause on the phone, on the, on the line. And he literally texted and said that when he was asking if the black sweatshirt and black sweatpants were found, because the only person who saw Sebastian after this um, dinner out was his mother, Katie Proudfoot. And guess what she did? She's moved away. She's moved away. What mother finds out that their child is missing and then moves away from the home? <sighs> that does not make any sense to me. To me, that is just huge red flags. Meanwhile, I don't know if they're helping to look for him or not, but we have hundreds of other people in Tennessee and outside of Tennessee who are looking for this young man. Now, there are some ways that autism could present in a person. He, Sebastian could have communication challenges. He would have more trouble reading social cues. He would find that participating in a conversation is difficult. He might have trouble relating to other people's thoughts or feelings. He might be unable to read body language and facial expressions as well. So he couldn't tell if someone was happy with him or unhappy with them unless they've literally told him. Um, they tend to use more flat, monotone speaking patterns and then invent their own descriptive words and phrases. And so... They don't always look into someone's eyes when they're speaking to them. They'll look away and then they talk in the same patterns and tones when they're at home with their friends or at work. And then they usually have something that they're um, like a favorite topic. It might be dinosaurs or something like that. So in my opinion, Sebastian is at a higher risk um, because of being autistic. Now, there are is a high prevalence of kids with autism who do run away, but it's really bizarre that he left without his shoes on and that he just took off and that no one has been able to find him, not a sighting of him on a doorbell, doorbell cam, nothing at all. So when the news of Sebastian's disappearance first began circulating, and this is kind of odd because usually parents are anxious to get the word out there that they have a missing child. And I'm going to check in with Chad and we're going to watch one of the early interviews with Sebastian, stepfather, Chris Proudfoot and Katie Proudfoot in just a second. But it's really weird that early on, the first thing they did was they decided to stay private. I think that's odd. And I, the only time I've ever seen that other than that is Candace Wells refusing to come out and advocate for Summer Wells. Usually you cannot hold a mother back from wanting to come out. Even if law enforcement said, we don't want you to, which I, I don't think they would be able to prevent you from doing it. 
usually mothers will knock people out of the way to get their child's name and face out there. We didn't see that from her. We didn't see that from her. She did finally come out and speak, but it, but it wasn't right away. So I don't know. I just think it's very strange that we haven't seen any kind of uh, information on him. So let's go back. I want to go to this interview, this early interview. This is from today. This we, I'm going to do the Narcid Diver thing too, but I want to go through the other stuff first um, just to kind of catch everybody up. So let me grab this one. And I have the Nancy Grace one queued up as well. All right. this nice and big. Can you guys see that? All right, let me go ahead and um, play this for you guys. E I E Proudfoot. So this interview um, was done early on. It was done March 7th. And it's just very, very weird. They wouldn't appear on camera and at this point, And I don't know why. And so all we have are close-ups of their hands. Um, <sighs> I don't even know what to think about this. Let me know what you think in the comments. But P R O U D F O O T. Chris C H R I S. Last name's Proudfoot. P R O U D F O O T. I'm going to say hello to. So Chad. I mean, first, just as parents, tell me what the last now over a week has been like for you two. Horrible beyond words. Um. This was an experience that I would have never dreamed would come, honestly. I just, I can't put words to how hard this has been and how much it hurts not knowing where my son is, where, where he's at, if he's okay. Just horrible is the best thing I can say. So why won't she get on camera? Why are we looking at their hands? The hands you're looking at are Chris Proudfoot and Katie Proudfoot's hands. She wouldn't appear on camera. I think that's odd. Again, most parents would be knocking someone out of the way to get on camera to advocate for their child. Seth Rogers had t-shirts of his son. He has, he's gone on every <clears throat> channel he can go to to try to raise awareness for his son. In contrast... It's just a bizarre contrast. What about for you? It's rough. I mean, we are on day 11, no answers. And the horrible things that people say just keep rolling in, regardless of taking time to consider the facts and, you know, assumptions is what they're going off of. But, you know, for us, it's, we sit here and we wait, we wait, and we wait, and hopefully we'll get an answer, or hopefully he walks through our door, which would be amazing. I was going to say, how badly do you both want Sebastian to just walk through that front door to get that call? I'd give anything. In a heartbeat, I would give anything. There's not. It's not measurable. Let's put it that way. There's no measurable. Anybody says, oh, it is. You've never sat in these shoes. You've never been in this situation and I don't ever wish for people to be in this situation. And what, what's Sebastian like? What's his personality like? What does he love to do? He, for the most part is happy. He likes to laugh and joke and tell you all about everything. And then some, um, he so some people are saying you can see bite marks on Chris's hands. I, I see like little tiny little marks but I don't know if I would characterize them as bite marks, but if you want, I'll enhance the photos and see what I can do with them for the next time. He loves games. Uh, he loves video games. 
Um, he loves to play with his Legos, um, even building things uh, with me. We, we build little projects here and there, but um, he's, um, he's always a character. Are there any like weird tendencies that he has that might be able to help people find him in this search? I don't know how helpful to finding him, but he fidgets <coughs> constantly. He loves shiny pennies, paper clips. He's always like, uh, whenever we go to the grocery store, um, he always looks on the ground and looks under the register counter and he's always looking for shiny pennies everywhere. Um, paper clips. He loves to bend them out of shape and play with them, fidget with them. Um, he loves playgrounds. Um, I mean, we've said it before. He likes fishing and, and things like that. But um, Cats. Boy he, loves cats. He does. He loves cats. It's his favorite animal. <laughs> um, so at least they're talking about him in the present tense? I don't know. He's just. He's a good kid. There are no leads, nothing caught on video. Your son has been missing for 11 days now. How does that make you feel as parents? So 11 days and then they can only film her hands. I can't even imagine what this reporter is thinking this for those of you that don't know this is caitlin miller out of fox 17 nashville let's listen in i i mean i don't have words to describe how i'm feeling right now i mean i every day is harder than the last i mean we're out we're looking we're we're trying to make sure that everyone stays looking and doesn't let his face fall to the bottom of a feed or, or get covered by some other nonsense. I mean, I just, we just want our boy home. So that's what she was saying on March 7th, but then here we are in April and she and Chris Proudfoot moved out of their house and again, I don't understand the mentality of a mother that would move out of their house when they have a missing child and not leave anyone in the house. I I, I don't understand why she would leave it all for under it. Nothing would drag me away from that house until I knew what happened to my to my son. But she moved out with Chris Proudfoot. They took off. It's very, very bizarre. The whole thing is very, very bizarre. So huge red flags. But I think it's interesting to go through this early interview. They are at least talking about Sebastian in the present tense, but won't appear on camera and, and to advocate for their son and stepson. So I don't know. Let me know what you think in the comment section below, guys. Let's continue on. When you walked in Monday morning, and didn't see Sebastian in his room, what was your gut reaction? My very first reaction was, oh, he got up and got breakfast. <laughs> um, but when I realized he actually wasn't in the house, I've never experienced sheer panic in the way that I did. And basically for every minute since, so panicked that she had to leave the house without her without her son returning back home. I, I don't know, you guys. I believe she felt panic, but I'm not convinced that she felt panic because I, I mean, I don't know what to think. Did she get in? Did they was there some kind of an altercation that night, an argument, a dispute? And Sebastian did something and she locked him out and, and forgot and, and went to sleep or something like that. I mean. And then we have Chris Proudfoot, who says he wasn't at home during the entire month of February. He was supposedly working around three and a half hours away from the house. What kind of 
stepfather doesn't come home on the weekends. I know lots of parents, stepmoms, stepdads, moms, dads that work and have to travel, but they still come home. They don't just like not come home for, for, for weeks and weeks. So I think that's very suspicious as well. And it makes me wonder if there was something going on in the house. I know having a special needs child can probably cause a lot more stress and tension in the home, but was something going on in this household that either Katie locked him out and he wandered away or what did, was there some kind of an argument and he hopped out the window, although wouldn't a neighbor's doorbell cam or some camera have picked him up? It's just so bizarre. Let me um, check in with chat and we're going to continue with this interview. I have this Nancy Grace um, interview queued up. Um, but let me say hello to chat. I, it is called, called social media. I do want to be social. I'm glad you guys are here. So welcome, you guys. I'm so glad you guys are here with me today. Hey, Florence. It's uh, Tell me what your questions are. Deb says, hey, from North Carolina, the mom has done something to that beautiful boy. Sarah says, this case is so sad. Great to see you guys. Please give this a thumbs up if you haven't already. We have so much stuff to dig into. I have five packages prepared. I'm sorry I'm not on camera today. I have been fighting a chest infection and I'm finally getting better, but I just wanted to go live and not worry about hair and makeup. <laughs> Desire said, I'm so attached to this little guy and I've never even met him, Sebastian Strong. I think that's so, so kind. And I think a lot of people are feeling like that where they just feel like, they do feel a, a closeness with this, with this young man. So um, Tara says, do we think, do we know if there is NA family? And if so, are they close to a reservation thinking out loud? I don't know. That's a great question. I don't, I don't know. I'll try to find out uh, less. Hey, Leslie. Desire to my heart breaks for Seth. Villainous Cupcake says most moms would stay at home in case he comes back. Hey, right? I agree with you. I think it's very strange that they just took off. Sears Buck says, I agree. This is a strange situation. Leslie says red flags are all over the place. Desire said, I'm not sure that he ever made it back home. They found no scent of him outside his house. Yeah, that is odd because the last time he was seen on camera was, of course, the night before. The only sighting we have of him, Katie says that she um, put him to bed around nine and then she heard a thud around 10. And then that's the last thing that she had. But I thought it would be helpful to go through some of these early interviews El Barica, hey, good to see you, says maybe she sees Sebastian walking in and out of her bedroom. Could be. I mean, was there some kind of an altercation when they got home? Why did Katie call Chris Proudfoot rather than calling law enforcement herself? And Chris Proudfoot didn't call 911. He called the sheriff's office. Was he trying to report this without having a recorded 911 call? And if so, why? My insane world of tears says, Sirius, I was thinking about it because if they were near um, Native uh, NA or near a reservation, it would be easy to hide him. I just don't see the motive on that with all of the eyes on that. I just think they would have brought him up. Hey, Cricket. Judy says the Proudfoots are handing out flyers at Cracker Barrel. Oh, that's great. Thank you for that, Judy. So they are helping to look. That's good. That's a good sign. Desiree said it's been over six weeks now. All right. So, yeah, very, very strange. S.J. Howard says Choctaw, Choctaw in Mississippi, nine counties have reservations. Thanks for that. That's really helpful. Cricket says Chris tells the truth about Sebastian Rogers. Where did you put him? Mother knows as well. So about a view. So about of you tell the truth and go in there and tell them where Seth Sebastian Rogers is at. So a lot of people do feel like the Proudfoots know where he is and just aren't saying, I don't know. Law enforcement said they don't see any evidence of foul play, but 
we've, you know, we've heard a lot of inconsistencies from these parents. And that's why I want to go through these early interviews because we're going to point them out. Tara says, I'm not sure, but I think you're aware of the NA and I'm definitely have a Native American last name. Yeah, they do. Sears Black says, when the stepfather started saying he only with a belt, I was like, no, sir. Yeah, I know that. And that was like extreme for just lying. That's, that's extreme. And especially a special needs child, there's no reason to put your hands on a special needs child. None at all. SJ Howard says he feels like he is at a reservation. I hope so. Cause that means he's safe. And Jess says, please hit the like button. It's greatly appreciated. Yeah, please hit the like button. Please subscribe if you haven't already. And let's get back to this interview because I have so much information to go through. That um, not knowing where your child is is a pain that... Um, I've never... I've never known pain like this before. And walk me through the events that happen, you know, from Sunday leading up to Monday when you didn't see him that morning. Listen to this, you guys. Sunday, uh, we were out and about. We had a, a really good day. We were out <laughs> um, doing our thing, running around. You know, we had dinner that evening. And when we came home, uh, we had a pretty good evening together as well. Um, he was playing right up until bedtime. And then some, I let him stay up a little late. Um, and when I told him to go to bed, you know, he's like, I love you, mom. I love you puppies. And uh, he went to bed. And um, I went to bed around midnight. So I have a little bit of a red flag on the fact that she feels a need to add in that he tells her that he loves her. It almost makes me wonder if something was going on. And the other thing is I don't hear her saying, and I, I told him I loved him. I don't hear her saying it back either. So I don't know. This could just be nothing. It could be something. Uh, Peter Hyatt, I know did, he's a statement analysis he, analyst. He did the Madeline McCann case for the Richard Hall series, which is uh, very well done. Um, but he, he saw a lot of red flags in their statements. Let's continue on together, guys. Everything seemed fine. And uh, when I went to wake him up for school, that's when I, <clears throat> I couldn't find him. He wasn't in his room and he wasn't in the house. And that's when I panicked. And when you panicked, uh, what'd you do? First thing I did was call my husband and um, I said, he's not here. My husband said, what do you mean he's not here? I said, he's not in the house. And he said, you know, immediately just started, you know, did you check here? Did you check there? Did you look here? And uh, I ran through the house. And um, at that point I was hysterical for lack of word. And uh, we called, we, we three-wayed the, um, the police and um, I, I'm, Within minutes, they were here. I so why why did he have to contact the sheriff's office? Why was she three way in? Why did why couldn't she call? I just don't understand why she had to call him and he had to make the call. It, again, it's just it's weird. It's very weird. Couldn't tell you exactly in my, how long. In my I know opinion, it was fast. Um, and we haven't found him. When I got the phone call that he was missing, um, like she said, we asked questions like, where is he at? Check this, check that. And then we called the sheriff's department and I called the sheriff's department. I stayed on the phone pretty much most of the time. Um, and then I, while I was at work, I asked for a relief, got a relief. Got in my truck from Memphis and made my way to Nashville. Alibi building wants to make sure everybody knows he was in Memphis. Now, Memphis to Nashville, it's only a three or three and a half hour drive. So to me, that in and of itself doesn't mean anything. It doesn't mean that he had 
anything to do with it. It doesn't mean that he doesn't because he certainly had plenty of time to drive there and drive back. All he'd have to do is leave his cell phone behind to do it. I don't know. What do you guys think? It's weird that this, 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 again, we have another child in Tennessee, just like in Summer Wells, that disappeared from inside their own house. And that was, I guess, Monday. And a mother. The morning he was. And a mother who wouldn't get on camera. Candace didn't get on camera for almost, for I think it was over two weeks for Summer Wells. And now we have uh, Katie Proudfoot wouldn't get on camera. E even here, she's not on camera. Missing, yes. <laughs> okay. And um, so what was your reaction when you got that call from your wife that Sebastian was missing? Initially, I was like, oh, he's he's goofing around again. Here we go. He's like hiding. And then when we talked about the places to check and he's not there, I was like, okay, stop. Instantly. Call the police. Instantly. I'm a black and white kind of guy. I, so. And to your knowledge, he didn't take shoes with him, right? He locked the door on his way out. Or I guess, what are some of the things that you think he did as he left? This is such a great question because would he forget his shoes, but remember to lock the door on the way out? I don't know you guys. We checked for all of his shoes and none of them are missing. Um, the door was locked, and what was there some discrepancy as to what he was wearing when he went to bed or what was he last seen wearing? What what was he wearing to bed that night? When he went to bed, uh, he was wearing black um, sweatpants with white stripes down the side. And he had on a black long sleeve black shirt with a print on the front. I'm pretty sure it was one of his um, uh like Star like, Wars or Halloween or. Um... How does Chris know what he was wearing? How does Chris know he wasn't there? He made sure to tell us he wasn't there. He, or even Minecraft. Yeah. Those yeah, are the three main things. The three things that he's majority is on his clothes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Boy, he has his flavors. <laughs> and obviously you guys are going through. Okay, so this bothers me too. This really bothers me. Boy has his flavors, not Sebastian. Doesn't say his name. I haven't heard her say his name yet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Boy has his flavors. <laughs> and obviously you guys are going through the unimaginable and then, you know, getting a lot of like the kickback that you've seen on social media. I mean, how much worse has that made it for you two to go through something like this? Honestly, um, we stopped looking at it. There's a lot of terrible people in this world, and I don't want to waste energy on any of that. I want the focus on finding our son. The facts are the facts. I mean, the, the police know the facts, and all I want, all I ask of anyone is if they're able and willing, is to help find him, help spread his flyer, help look for him, call in if you know anything or see anything. And I just want to commend this reporter. She, and this is just for those of you that are just joining me, this is Caitlin Miller, Fox 17 Nashville. She did a great job. You can just see her biting her lips. She is letting them talk. And uh, asking open-ended questions, really, really great job with this interview. But we just ask that people focus on finding Sebastian. And he's never done anything like that before, right? Just kind of walked out of the house. He's not a runner. Um, this is this is not normal for him to run away. Um, if I mean, I just. He's no, he's not a runner. And any places, I guess, I know you, you guys have been told to stay in the house, right? Just in case he comes home. We, we are doing what we've been asked to do by the law enforcement agencies and everybody involved. I am not going to divulge anything more than that. Yeah. But if you, what I'm trying to ask, I guess next is if you were to go out and search right now, if people want to help search, what types of places would you guys look 
at that he can maybe be at. Anywhere and everywhere. At this point, there's... It's been 11 days. He could be anywhere. Yeah. They've searched the woods. They've searched parks. They've searched creeks. They've searched... At this point, it, it anything and everything. Okay. This child was not abducted by aliens. He did not get evaporated out of the house. He did not spontaneously combust. So this anywhere and everywhere is, in my opinion, not helpful at all. And it, I don't, I don't even... I have no words. What do you guys, let me check in with you. What do you guys think about these answers? Anywhere and, and, and everywhere. She's giving them an opportunity to say, where is, where should we look? Where should we start? And their response is anywhere and everywhere. Oh my gosh. Carrie says, you need to check out the interview with Chris Proudfoot's ex Nina. Yeah, I, I will check that out. Thank you. Sarah says, I was not aware, but my great-grandmother, oh, was Cherokee. I'm very proud of the heritage. Yes, you guys should be. Um, it, you're the true Native Americans. And Joey says, why has Chris got bite marks on his arm? I'm trying to see the bite marks. I'm going to enhance the images myself. I've seen enhanced images online, but I'm not convinced. I, I have to do it myself to... to um, be convinced that they're really there because when I'm just looking at this video, I'm not seeing them. I see a couple little red marks, but I'm not convinced they're bite marks. It doesn't mean they're not there. I just want to say, but, but, uh, Leslie's saying dig up the yard. It's just so weird that they left the house. And then when they're asked where to look, where, how can we help? Where should we look? Um, okay. So Sirius also says she notices areas. I see little areas. I just, I'm not convinced yet, yet that they're bite marks and I want to do my own um, photo enhancement. And so I, I will do that. I'll start from scratch and do my own just because it's so easy to lay bite marks over a photo. It'd be really easy to fake something like that. And I've gotten duped in the past where somebody's faked something like that. I'm not saying somebody did. I'm just saying I've gotten, so I'm, I'm just going to do it myself and then I'll know. Um, Welcome. Yeah. Welcome everybody. I'm so glad you're here. Please subscribe and hit the notification bell. I am, we're going to be starting the Chad Daybell case tomorrow at 1030 opening statement start here on reporter room. If you are interested in watching a Idaho capital punishment trial, uh, you will be very interested and they aren't making fun of him yet. Yeah. Let's listen in guys. Let's go back. I give so much props to this interviewer. She did a great job of asking open-ended questions, but I'm like really just frustrated with the anywhere and everywhere. We're going to go through Nancy Grace also. And we, I have like five more packages. Anywhere and everywhere. The, anywhere this and point, everywhere. There's, oh my gosh. It's been 11 days. He could be anywhere. Yeah. They've searched the woods. They've searched parks. They've searched creeks. They've searched at this point, it, it anything and everything. Anywhere just that he could search. be. Staying out of the weather or or getting food or, I mean, honestly, at this point, he could genuinely be anywhere. How hopeful are you, too, that he will come home? I will never give up hope on finding my child. That's what she said on March 7th. But she's not home now. She moved out. That sounds like she gave up hope. And that makes me wonder, do they know what happened to him? I'm not saying they did something. Was it an accident or something like that? But it just, I think it's very, I will never give up hope on finding my child, but I'm going to move out of the house that, that he disappeared from and take off in my RV with my, with my, with the stepfather who, according to him, has never been home, has CPS cases open, had been opened on him and who I stood by and allowed him to hit my child with a belt, allegedly. Optimism is at its highest, our, regardless. Our son is out there. We're going to find him. And now just, I mean, publicly, like obviously police are now investigating a landfill. People are speaking out about that. What are your thoughts about that? Everybody has an opinion and their assumptions, and they are entitled to those. But as I've stated before, all we've asked people to do is to look at the facts, not what everybody's putting out there. If they have questions, call the law enforcement agencies. 
and they'll give you whatever they can give you. But the assumptions are just that. They are an assumption, your opinions. We pray for everybody for hopefully this never happens to you. And if it ever does, then you'll understand that I pray it doesn't. And they're doing their job. They're looking everywhere they can for my, for, I mean, their goal is the same. We just want to find him. If you could say something to Sebastian, if he's listening right now, what would you say to him? I would say that we love you and we miss you and we want you to come home. I still haven't heard this mother say this child's name. And just know that, that we all care about you so much. You're not in trouble. That door's unlocked and waiting for you to come home. You're and then the stepfather's going to talk about he's not in trouble. <laughs> oh my. That's, his, that's his first sentence. You're not in trouble. That again makes me wonder what happened that night. Did he get in trouble for something? Did he run out the door upset? Was the door locked behind him or did the door auto lock behind him? Did Katie not, you know, not notice? This is weird, guys. Let's that we all me. care about you so much. Not me. We. You're not in trouble. That door's unlocked and waiting for you to come home. Your puppies miss you. Your family misses you. I miss you. Just come home. Anything else that you two want to add or clear up or anything like that? Okay. Just help us find our son. Wow. Just like crickets there. Just, okay. Just help us find our son. I give so much credit to this interviewer. Oh my gosh. So this is Caitlin Miller out of Fox 17. She did a great job. She asked open-ended questions. I, you know, she would have rather have had their faces on camera, but they would not appear on camera, which I just find very, very odd. But I thought it was worth going back to this March 7th interview so that we can contrast it with um, Nancy Grace, where they actually do get on camera. Let me make sure I'm sharing this with you guys. Let me grab it. Okay. So this is on Facebook, Nancy Grace. Guys have left the home. Let me try it one more time. We now, Nancy is a, was, is a, for, just to want to just tell you Nancy's background, because what with the interview we just saw from, from Caitlin, she's a reporter, she's a journalist. So she's asking open-ended questions, trying to get as much information. I do feel like she was pulling teeth. Nancy is a former prosecutor. So she's going to ask more closed questions. And, and so what she ended up getting back from the Proudfoots is, is a lot of yes, no, yes, no kind of answers. We were given information that you guys have left the home. Is that true? Yes, ma'am. Why? I'm going back to work. You're going back. He, but he's, he's not back at work. So that's not even true. He's not back at work. Back to work. What about you, Ms. Prophet? And I'm not going back to work. Not yet, at least. Did you leave the home also, Miss Proudfoot? Yes, ma'am. Why? To accompany my husband going back to work, and then I'm coming back. She's still not back. Still not back. I'm to accompany my husband. Still not back. Let me check in with chat. This is social media. So let me just check in. You guys, drop your comments. I want to know what you guys are thinking about this. They did finally get on camera. Nancy Grace did a good job with the interview. She's just a different interviewer. So we have a prosecutor who's, you know, trying to get, get into this with them. But, you know, why did they leave the house? If you don't have anything to hide, if you don't have anything that, you know, you're, you don't have any 
problems. Why in the world, why in the world are you just putting this out there this way? Oh my gosh, I'm, I have to accompany my husband. She wasn't accompanying him in February when he was gone for the whole, for the whole month, according to him. She wasn't there then. It, it makes me almost wonder if there was some kind of an agreement that because having a special needs child is in the house is really hard. It does strain relationships. You know, was there a lot of tension around having him in the house? Uh, did Chris Proudfoot not want this uh, Sebastian in the house? Um, but we know Katie didn't go back to work. We know Chris Proudfoot didn't go back to work. So why did they really leave the house? And again, would you leave the house if you had a child missing? Cricket says mother and stepfather are out looking. They ain't been looking for nobody. Sears Black says, I thought that they said they were not looking because the police told them not to. Would I've I've heard that too. That's what they say. They all Chris Proudfoot also claims that the law enforcement didn't want to give him a lie detector test because he was out of town, so he couldn't have done it. But three and a half hours away is not, you know, I'm not saying he did it or anything like that, but it's not that far. He wasn't uh, in Europe where it would take, you know, we would have a plane and, and, and passports to get back into the country. This is just a few hours away. Um, Cricket says, it would be nice if he was safe and alive. He can go home with his dad. Yeah, Seth is his dad. Desire says, it's very strange. Tara says, Sirius might hide in the Appalachian Mountains. If you're a grandmother, walk the tear, trail of tears. I may ask if she was part of the Freeman who walked with us. Marta says, someone asked if they have seen the clothes that Sebastian had on at the restaurant the night before. Seth texted TBI. Yeah, we, we haven't heard yet, but we, we do know um, that he did. Sirius says that the stepfather gives her bad juju vibes. Wow. Hey, Marta, good to see you. Cricket says, why is Chris talked about what she did on for on Sunday when he wasn't there? Yeah, that's a great question. He talks about what, what she did on Sunday and he wasn't there. He tells what Sebastian was wearing and he wasn't there, right? That's why I wanted to look at that March 7th interview. And Jess says, he's not a nice man. There is something about him. Hey, Olwen, good to see you. Maria says, unbelievable how these two have been acting very suspicious red flags. Sirius Black says, I have very little knowledge about her experience, only that she was an interpreter. And Jess says, I have raised a son with autism. He's 28 now. It isn't easy at times, but as a parent, you just get on with it. Red flags, Leslie says, hey, brother Mike, I did not know we had anything today. Well, I'm glad you're here. I, I did post it in the Facebook group and on the Reddit thing, but I did, um, I did, I did have it scheduled, but I have shuffled things around a little bit this week because of having a chest cold. So I'm sorry if that caused any confusion. I'm glad you're here now. Hey, Jody, good to see you. Rangers Forever 55 says, I think the stepdad has always been honest and has a mom, but the real dad is nasty. So you think the real father is the problem and not the stepfather. Interesting. Sears Black says, I know what you mean. He's off somehow. Hey, losing brain cells. Geez, sorry. I got lost. I'm going to have to rewind and start over. Hello, roomies. Hey, good to see you. Olwen says, he's a long time missing now. I don't know how he could be managing. Yeah, I know. I'm worried about that too. I'm worried about that as well. Mike says, the story of the Proudfoots keeps changing. Yeah, it does. Thank you so much for the super sticker, Brother Mike. I really appreciate you. Um, very much appreciate it. I'll be putting that toward the channel I am getting some new editing equipment. Okay, so let's see. Carrie says he knew the code to get in the door. So why isn't his mom at home? Why isn't Katie Proudfoot at home? If he, if he, she thinks, I mean, where would he go back to? If he did run away, if he did run away, he would go back to the house, right? Hey, Angie. 
Sierra said, if mom works for Brinks, why did they not have at least a couple of cameras set up? It's weird. I mean, you know, maybe. I don't know. That's a great question. There was, you know, according to them, there was no camera set up. All right, let's. Brother Mike said, did Sebastian, did mom give Sebastian his last meal? We don't know. We, I think they were out to dinner that night. So that was the last time he was seen on camera. Sears Black says, those who are just joining us, please hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't. Thank you so much, Sears. All right. Hey, Wicked. And Jess says, Peter Hyatt is excellent. Yeah, I really like his, I like him a lot. Carrie says, Proudfoots aren't native. It's a Scottish name in this case. Thanks for that, Carrie. Leslie says she knows the truth about her son and where he is. I wonder if she's going through what his ex went through. I don't know. Desire says why, what, no thud at 10. Yeah, that got added in. Now that doesn't bother me that much that the, the thud was added in because it could have been that she just remembered it. And then brother Mike is saying no wedding ring. Now I did see a wedding ring in the, the video on March 7th. Are you saying on this one? Let me see if I can see a hand. So accompanying my husband going back to work and then I'm coming back. Okay. When will you be back? Do you know yet? No, not yet. Are you concerned about being away while the search is ongoing? Absolutely. I am. Then why are you going? Because my son could be anywhere and we're looking everywhere and anywhere. What? Oh my gosh. You took off in an RV because your son could be anywhere. I, I don't know if you guys, it's, it's really, really, it's weird. It's weird. I think Nancy Grace did a really good job getting them to get on camera. She offers Chris Proudfoot a chance to take a lie detector test. He says he will. She sets it all up and then he reneges on it. He reneges on it. So I don't know. I think I just see so many red flags. So when Sebastian left the house, did Katie lock the door behind him? Did Sebastian's mom, Katie, feel pressure about having a special needs son and how this was and how was this impacting her marriage to Chris Proudfoot, because I'm just concerned that some type of altercation happened in the house leading up to Sebastian's disappearance. Why hasn't the stepfather, Chris, Proud, Chris Proudfoot, been home for the entire month of February? Was he avoiding having to deal with a special needs child? What do you guys think? So, I mean, Chris Proudfoot was only a few hours away. He wasn't working in Europe where it would be really maybe costly to come home on the weekends. He was working a few hours away. Why not come home? But yet he wasn't coming home. So I think that's very, very strange. So um, let's, let me take this down. I'm going to grab this one instead. So this is... Let me just say, tell you who this is. This is Chris Proudfoot, the call. So this is Narked, N-A-R-K-E-D, divers. They're uh, newer YouTubers. And um, please subscribe to their channel um, and give them a thumbs up on this. I'm going to just play. This is a recorded conversation. So he, in this, in the state that he recorded this in, he has, you can do a one-way recorded call. So this was a recorded conversation between himself and Chris Proudfoot. Let's listen in and let's hear what Chris Proudfoot has to say on this call. Her getting, uh, I didn't know what, who she actually worked for, so. Just that for y'all. Yeah, we'll That's what, and that's what I heard. And then I read it. I read the article from the actual news, and it said that they, the dog got a scent, a scent that they uh, from an article clothing or something. And then they tracked all the way here, like several times. Well, here's, 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 here's your better one. There was a the dispatcher. The, the call got released from the dispatchers to the deputies and the responding units. In that uh, release of information, you can clearly hear. Dispatcher and the cops all say the dog's got a scent. It's over here. It's a call. Okay. Okay.
Okay, so I've also heard that the dog had a scent, but then I heard that they didn't have a scent. So does Chris Proudfoot know something that we don't know? Does that law enforcement just isn't telling the public? Or is he so out of touch with law enforcement that he doesn't know that there's not a scent? What do you guys think? Yeah, and that's what and that's what everybody kept saying. And I'm like, there's got to be some truth to this because that doesn't make any sense. Like, so yeah, they track tracked here. So yeah, and then like I said, the path that they tracked. So ours, if you're in that subdivision, yeah, I'm directly the next subdivision over to the left is our subdivision. Okay. It's called Victoria Place. Okay. The scent that they got, as soon as you turn in our subdivision, you're on Kelly. Driving all the way up to the very top of the hill at a four way, you'll see that to the right they're cutting in a new road that will link all this together. Okay. Yeah. Is that what he's talking about directly right there? So I'm wondering if they felt the need to release this because of the inconsistencies that they received from Chris Proudfoot on this call. What do you guys think? Let me take a couple of questions from chat and then we're going to watch some more um, of this interview. It's, I mean, this uh, phone call, I, it's very, very interesting. Hey, Jody, Sears Black says no forced entry. Yeah, no forced entry into the home. The door was reportedly locked behind them. Desire said, I thought she went for a drive first. Yeah, I heard that too that she went for a drive to look look for him. She had Chris Proudfoot on the phone. This is Katie Proudfoot. And then Chris Proudfoot calls the sheriff's office, not 911, and reports it missing with Katie Proudfoot on the phone with him. I just think it's odd. Why didn't, you know, she, is Katie not able to call 911 by herself? I just don't get it. Hey, 1979 ACR. All right. And Josh says, watch how Chris Proudfoot taps KP on the hand when she's talking. Yeah, he taps her on the hand, kind of controlling the interview. Wicked says, if you're not on camera, people can't judge your body language. Right. And I think when they did get on camera with Nancy Grace, they did a lot of yes, no questions, even though, and some of her questions were just yes, no questions, but some of them, I think, um, you know, could have had a, a little bit more of an answer. And Tara says, I think one or both of these parents has done something to this child. I don't know. Um, maybe. Girl Friday says, I still believe someone may have picked him up. That's possible. And Janine says, he is high functioning and verbal. SRB says, they have to stick together on everything so they can keep their story straight, in my opinion. So it sounds like you think there's some scripting involved here. All right, let's watch the rest of this interview together. And do, you, do you know how like how much they actually drained? They drained the whole thing. It's okay. So initially... Let me clarify, this is not an interview. This was a re phone call that apparently was recorded, but he didn't release it until he decided ultimately that he was going to release it. For those of you just joining me, this is Narked Diver. And I will show you theirs in just a second. They went over to look at it. It was only me. <coughs> uh, from the picture that you showed me, there's a lot of new runoff. Yeah, that's what I'm um, yeah. trying to figure out. I was like, I don't know how shallow it was before or after. Yeah. I'm, I'm five foot nine, and it was me. Okay. <laughs> so, and they even drained it and still walked it. Okay, so they actually walked it. I didn't know that. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, and that is actually information that was told to me by law enforcement. Yeah, so they actually... Because I went on a... Being a law enforcement thing, you know, being a vehicle. Right. So let me just show this really quick to you guys. I'm just going to... So this is the call is Narcan Divers. And let's read their description. Uh, this is Trey. He said, initially, he hesitated to share this conversation between Chris Proudfoot and me. However, upon review of the call, I realized the importance of the transparency in the search for Sebastian Rogers, Tennessee, 
where this call took place follows the one party consent rule for audio recording. My decision to release this conversation is driven solely by the hope of bringing Sebastian Rung and I'm going to subscribe. Okay, so that is Norka Diver. Let's finish listening in. I can actually give you a little bit more information than what everybody's out there running their mouth. Yeah. Well, I'm not going public with it. No. But honestly, I'm tired of the BS and the rumors. That's what I, I kept trying to tell everybody. I was like, it's, you know, the kid, anyway, I said he left the house and then the internet went crazy with rumors and speculation. And I was like, I don't go off of rumors. I go off of what we got now. And I said something about that pond. I said, and it just stopped. I said, so that's where I want to go. That's where I want to search and try to figure this out. So, then, so to work backwards from the pond, okay, if you were to walk from the pond, go straight up into the construction site, you'll see where they cut the road and it turns left. If you walk that all the way back, it runs you to our subdivision. Okay. If you go down Kelly, all the way down to Stafford, and walk down towards Stafford and toward our house, from our house, I'm gonna, if you're looking at my house, I'm going to tell you where the dog stand went. They started on the front porch. Okay. So we've heard from law enforcement that there was no dog scent found. So is he just misleading this guy or does he have, is he privy to some kind of information that we don't have? Off the front porch, the dogs cut to the right. They go all the way down the side of the house along the fence. So they went to the back side or the back, that, right. to the north. So if you're looking, if you're looking at my house. Okay. It's going to be the right hand side. The dog goes all the way down the fence. The dog comes all the way back up into the yard. And then it cuts diagonally to the house. So basically he's, he's giving this guy directions. I don't know what to think about this. I don't want to play the, um, the whole interview, because I do want uh, to, I don't want to step on this guy's view. So if you want to watch the rest of it, you'll want to go over to Norkid Diver to see the rest of the interview. But I do want to talk a little bit about, um, so we've talked a little bit about the stepfather. I do want to talk a little bit about Seth Rogers. He is um, his actual father. So he was choked up with emotion. This is in contrast to what we saw from Katie and Chris Proudfoot, in my opinion. Uh, I'm sorry, Katie, yeah, and Chris Proudfoot. Um, he was choked up with emotion as he revealed his son had told him he did not want to go home to his mother's house not long before he disappeared. So what was going on? Um, he also gave an interview on crime stories with Nancy Grace. And wiping away tears, he said that the his 15-year-old communicate never communicated any signs of a watching my words he told him that he didn't want to go home to hendersonville and so he said i asked him why don't you want to go back and mr rogers told the podcast host this is nancy grace quote he wouldn't tell me he didn't say why he just said he didn't want to go back so very very interesting um Boy, Sebastian Rogers. Why? Why is there a new search re-canvassing areas that have already been searched? Could it have anything to do with the fact that Sebastian's glasses may have been found? And right now, controversy swirling. About so the glasses, I just want to say they were not Sebastian's glasses. About a polygraph. I'm Nancy Grace. This is Crime Stories. But I do want to talk about the polygraph because Nancy Grace, Chris Proudfoot said he didn't have to take a, pro a polygraph with TBI, which I find that very strange. He said they didn't need one from him. This is according to Chris Proudfoot in his interview with Nancy Grace. And she so she asks him, will he take a polygraph? He said, yes, he will. She sets the whole thing up and then he refuses. Let's listen. Thank in. you for being with us here at Crime Stories. that in relation to Sebastian's home where he was living with his mother, Miss Proudfoot? Uh, what? 
It's about 14 miles from. Uh, so this is Seth Rogers. This is Sebastian's real dad. Uh, his mom's residence. It's not in Hendersonville. Now, Seth Rogers, you were telling me it's about 14 miles that Sebastian shared with his mother and his stepfather, the Proudfoots. Had he recently gotten new glasses or am I seeing Seth Rogers, his actual glasses? They were close enough that I asked the Sumner County to, to bag and tag them. I mean, but they weren't in his glasses. I'm going to just move forward on this. I just want to. What we do is take the lens out and compare it to, well, we did. We did that. We set up a polygrapher, a very well-respected polygrapher, a place and a time. Um, Mr. Proudfoot. A polygrapher is somebody who administers a polygraph test. So Nancy went through all the trouble to set up a polygraph for Chris Proudfoot and, and, and listen to this, but you guys. It tells us that he has been instructed by the TBI not to be on with us today and ask for help finding his son, his stepson, and not to take a polygraph. I do you, do you believe that the TBI would not want him talking on an interview? Of course they would. Do you believe that the TBI would tell him not to take a polygraph and that would they wouldn't want to polygraph him himself? Of course they would. They would they would definitely want to have a polygraph of him. I've never heard of that. I always <laughs> loved it when witnesses, targets, or defendants, anybody would take a polygraph. If I want my own polygraph, I will get one as an assistant district attorney. So I find that very curious that he would be dissuaded from asking for the help from the public as we see a volunteer search launching right now with law enforcement and not to take a polygraph. So what do you guys think about that? Should he, I mean, would you just not take a polygraph? <laughs> I, I don't get it. It just doesn't make any sense. Um, this is Nancy Grace. Um, Crime Stories is her channel. Let me see if I can show it to you guys. Um, I'm already subscribed to her. Um, so this is her channel here. If you want to subscribe, I'll give this one a thumbs up. Um, but, and then I, I don't think law enforcement, they would want the, the Proudfoots to do every interview they can get because they're going to learn information through statement analysis from every interview, in my opinion. Uh, what do you guys think? Let me check in with chat and then we'll get back to this because we have so much stuff to, why did, why did, why wouldn't he take a polygraph? It's weird, right? It's weird. Let me um, see if I can get on a photo. Tell us he would take the polygraph anywhere, anytime. Isn't that true? Yep. He said it. Anywhere any, okay. you name the place, I'll okay. be there. He also told us, should I believe him or my lion ears? that he has never taken a polygraph before. Didn't he tell us that? That's what he said. He told you that. Okay. Dave Mack, uh, CrimeOnline.com investigative reporter. Did he not tell another outlet he had already taken a polygraph and passed it? Yep, he sure did. He Whoa. So he said he was first, and we all heard him on Nancy Grace saying that he did that law enforcement didn't require him to take a polygraph because he was so far away. Then he offers to take the polygraph, and then he goes on to another outlet and says, what? Let me back that up. What? He also told us, should I believe him or my lion ears that he has never taken a polygraph before? Didn't he tell us that? That's what he said. He told you that. Okay. Dave Mack, uh, CrimeOnline.com investigative reporter. Did he not tell another outlet he had already taken a polygraph and passed it? Yep, he sure did. He Exact words. Explain, he said somebody please. asked. He did interviews. He did a number of interviews, Nancy. When uh, And in this one particular, asked about, have you taken a polygraph? He said, somebody asked the question. This is a direct quote. Was a polygraph taken and has it been passed? Yes. 
I didn't specify who or when, but what I can tell you, everything has been vetted completely. Polygraphs have come back as past. So I'm confused as in why they're all wondering if myself, my wife, and the biological father took one. Exact words. That's what he said. So that is a big whopper of a lie. Let me get a, get onto a photo of Sebastian. I, I don't like the snake one. Let me just, let me do that one. That one's sweet. I, the snake, I don't know why it bothers me, but it really, really does. Let me check in with chat. Um, yeah. So that was just a blatant lie. Kudos to Nancy Grace. I just, I, you know, she's the, the, uh, the OG in the true crime community. She is, was doing true crime before there even was such a genre of doing true crime. Maria says, in my opinion, Chris was afraid he would fail the polygraph. SRB said, yes, he did. Grace Green says, just because law enforcement says no need, why wouldn't he do a polygraph anyway? Yeah. And on one interviewer, he's saying he didn't take one and he agrees to take it. And then on the next one, he took one. Why is he lying? Why? I mean, you, we have a missing autistic teenager why would you lie about this in my opinion allegedly don't come for me uh granny says when she was up and left home i knew how and where no matter what and will leave and no way no matter how much the neighborhood are being bothered yeah it was weird that she just granny love it was weird that she just went and left home Janine says, how ironic, Chris and Sebastian deserved the belt for life. Yeah. Wow. Snap to Janine. Um, yeah, exactly. And he's sitting here lying about something that's so important. This isn't not important. This is really important. And he's lying. And it it does make me wonder. Yeah, also, Olwyn's got red flag, red flag. Huge red flags on this, you guys huge red flags. Why are you lying about something that's so important when you have a autistic teenager that has disappeared from, according to Katie and Chris Proudfoot, inside their own home? Again, this reminds me so much of the Summer Wells case. But yeah, Olwyn's right, red flag. Go Friday said they really need to put their differences aside to work together. I don't know if you can really work with somebody who, who, who isn't telling the truth. Shrimp is like, I don't like the snake picture either. Yeah. I don't know why it like skeeps me out. The puppy one's a lot cuter. The puppy's adorable. Girl Friday said, I'd be making every effort possible. Every leaf turned over. Yeah, me too. Hey, Wicked. Wicked says lying about polygraph tests equals guilt. Oh, wow. I do think it's very like, what a thing to lie about. Of all the things you're going to lie about, why would you lie about that? Let's just listen to what exactly he said. I just want to hear this journalist, this reporter for Crime Online. Because I think Take a polygraph. Nancy went to a lot of trouble to set up this polygraph. He agreed to do it. Then he reneged. And then he said he already took one. Uh-uh. And But he's going to go after a special needs child with a belt for lying what, what what about you chris proudfoot what should happen to you now very curious dave mack didn't mr proudfoot chris proudfoot sebastian rogers stepfather didn't he tell us he would take the polygraph anywhere anytime isn't that true yep he said it Anywhere any, okay. you name the place. Listen to this, you guys. He also told us, should I believe him or my lion ears, that he has never taken a polygraph before? Didn't he tell us that? That's what he said. He told you that. Okay. Dave Mack, uh, CrimeOnline.com investigative reporter, did he not tell another outlet he had already taken a polygraph and passed it? Yep, he sure did. He Exact words. Explain, he somebody please. asked. He did interviews. He did a number of interviews, Nancy, when uh, and in this one particular asked about, have you taken a polygraph? He said somebody asked the question. This is a direct quote. Was a polygraph taken and has it been passed? Yes. 
I didn't specify who or when, but what I can tell you, everything has been vetted completely. Polygraphs have come back as passed. So I'm confused as in why they're all wondering if myself, my wife, and the biological father took one. Exact words. That's what he said. Wow. Just wow. Let me get on a cute picture of Sebastian so y'all can see him. So that's just so sneaky, shady. I don't know what you want to call that. That is some not truth. And I give and kudos to Nancy Grace for, for calling him out on that. Girl Friday said, yeah, he was out of town working, right? Yeah, that's what he says. But it was only, it was three and a half hours away, right? From Memphis to Nashville. So that's not that far. That's drivable. I don't know. Frank Morano said, said they need to be surveilled. I'm wondering if that's why they left their house. What would make you leave your house? That's another just like massive red flag. In this case, what would make you leave your house with a missing special needs teenager, but the mother, Katie Proudfoot, leaves the house unattended to go accompany Chris Proudfoot? Brother Mike says, CP, Chris Proudfoot gave Sebastian snake away because he didn't feel. That's sad. Gray screen says guilty people stare at the floor and avoid eye contact. Well, they wouldn't even get on camera on the interview. I showed you from March 7th. If you haven't ha seen that interview, when this is over, you'll want to back it up and look at it with, with, uh, I mean, just, <coughs> they wouldn't even get on camera. She was relegated to shooting their hands. I am going to enhance those photos. Tabby cat says driving listing. Margaret says, I'm not 100% in bio dad's court. Bio dad is Seth Rogers, biological dad. With the knowledge that he had for Sebastian being S8 and other things, why didn't Seth have his son out of that house a long time ago? Because it wasn't the parents of the that did it. It was a, um, a friend that was playing with them. So the parents could say, you know, we didn't know about it. And so, it, you know, it's really hard. I mean... I, I, you know, I don't know either, but I, I don't want to really go after Seth Rogers too much because I think, you know, and maybe he wasn't perfect. I mean, none of us are, if we could, could any of us hold up to the magnifying glass, but you know what? He's not leaving town to, to go accompany somebody else to a job they don't have. Chris Proudfoot's not at work. Yvette says, I also think Maddie's mom did it also, and weirdo Stephen covered it up. I don't know who Maddie is. Frank Moreau says, better investigated. Yeah, definitely. Hush Pup says, I love Nancy's interview with Kate and Chris. It was the quietest I had seen Chris. Yeah, he was probably scared to talk. Probably, uh, I noticed it was all like, yes, no answers. But I feel like everybody's kind of seen that one, which is why I wanted to go through this one. Shrimp says red flags, hearts for Sebastian and red flags. Yeah, big red flags, you guys. Marta said, if Chris didn't do it, he knows who did. I don't know. Janine said, there's been no confirmation about his whereabouts. Chris acts dodgy about that subject. Yeah, and I think the fact that they wouldn't get on camera is weird. If this was, tell me to, to all of you guys who are moms and dads out there, if this was your child, if you had a special needs child that disappeared from inside your home, would anything keep you from getting on camera to advocate, to hold up photographs, to try to get the word out? Instead, they're complaining about social media. They're complaining about it with all of the, the uh, publicity that, that, that social media is bringing to this missing child. But maybe they didn't ever dream it would blow up like this, that it would become as big as it has. So, yeah, great point, Janine. Girl Friday said, once someone lies, it would be hard to believe anything at that point. Jeff asks, do you know if their GPS was checked on their vehicles and cell phones? I know that they, all we know is what, 
they've said. They said their cell phones were collected. They said their cell phones were collected. And I don't know if their GPS was, but remember, Katie wouldn't even tell Nancy Grace what kind of work vehicle she had. Remember that? She had a work vehicle and she wouldn't even say what the kind was. I just found that odd. Like you, you, she said she wasn't allowed to buy work. And I'm like, your work won't let you say. And, and maybe, you know, if it's Brinks, maybe she really isn't allowed to say, but it's, it was just kind of an odd answer. Frank says, FBI needs to kick the door down and get the evidence, fingerprints, the works. And there are cell phones that need to be investigated. Well, they're not even involved in this case. My understanding is local law enforcement is trying to handle it. I think the FBI, this was the mistake we saw in the in the John Benet Ramsey case, is that local law enforcement tried to handle it without bringing in state like TBI or the FBI. And in Colorado, they could have brought in, you know, the state police or the, the FBI. They didn't do it. They tried to handle it themselves. And I think, I think that, you know, probably, and I know local law enforcement wants to find this, this uh, special needs child. I know they want to find Sebastian, but it does concern me that I, I do feel like the FBI needed to be brought in right away. Desire said, I have to run. Good to see you. Thanks for stopping by. Maria says TBI needs to look at the interviews, go more father investigation on Chris and Katie should look into the whole house to see if there's any clues and evidence inside the home. Grace Green says the court made the rules on custody. Shrimp said, says, did they find his clothes he had on at the roadhouse? We don't know. We don't know. So last night I was watching Dave Pascal's show because I'm looking because I heard they had found a male body in Rogersville. So I'm, I'm concerned, you know, I'm like wondering, you know, did they find him? Um, I haven't heard anything. So I'm assuming it's not him, but you know, Seth Rogers phoned in and he's, he, and he was literally texting law enforcement that question. Were the clothes that Sebastian was wearing at the roadhouse? Is that, were those clothes still in the house or not? Because, you know, a big question is that's the last time someone besides Katie Proudfoot saw him, right? So Hush Pup says, definitely. And Jazz says, I think that law enforcement are more clued up about things than we know. I agree. I think law enforcement, if I were them, I would be wanting to keep my, you know, keep my conversations going with everybody, with, with Seth, with Chris and Katie. I would want to keep all the conversations open. And uh, I wouldn't want to burn any bridges with anybody. So I agree with you, and Jazz. Shrimp says, one of the neighbors has said that all those houses have secret rooms. Do they explore that? I don't know. We don't know. Escape says nothing. What all we've been told by law enforcement is that there was no foul play. Now, they could just be telling us that, right? They could just be saying that to just, they don't have to tell us the truth. They're allowed to lie to us. A uh, girlfriend said, so what kind of job did Chris Proudfoot have? <coughs> I thought he was working something on construction, but I could be wrong. SR, if you guys know, drop, tell me in the chat what he actually did for, was doing for a living. And SRB says she would be screaming for help to find. Yeah, me too. Coffee says you couldn't keep me off the TV. Hushpup says, begging and pleading for your son's safe return, nothing from them. No, they didn't even say his name in that interview. That's what I wanted to show you, the March 7th interview. They don't even say his name. Again, that that's very concerning that they're not saying Sebastian's name. Jenny said, Chris actually said he didn't ever think it would get this far. Yeah. So what is this, right? It would get this far. What was he thinking when he was thinking this? Did he not realize that social media would grab hold of this case and it would take off like it has. Is that what he meant? Great, great point. SBD says media can be super pushy and annoying, but if this is your kid, you should be in front of the camera. No question. Yeah. Uh, people always think that journalists and reporters are annoying because they're going to dig and they're going to, you know, we're going to, I'm, I'm a journalist too. We're going to dig for the truth, but, and that is annoying if you have something to hide. 
but and I and I again I want to be careful because I feel like you know I don't want to everything I'm sharing is just my opinion but I just am seeing so many red flags that I have alarm bells going off and I and I think some of you guys do too. Logan says somebody saw Sweetie Pie maybe in the Fine Sebastian group that six different people saw mom Brock socks at 5:45 a.m. in a store past the school. They even, yeah, I saw that and I thought about sharing it, but it was an anom anonymous post. So I'm just trying to lock down some kind of independent confirmation on that. But I did see it, Logan. So I'm not saying it's true. I'm not saying it's not true. I just didn't feel comfortable bringing it because I don't have any independent confirmation. And when somebody posts anonymously, it could be, it, it could just be, it could be legitimate, but it could also be nonsense. Grace says people who don't search for their children know where they are. Woo. People who don't search for their children know where they are. Wow. SPD said, I talk to anyone who would listen. Yeah. Agreed. Hey, Logan. Marta says, mom and stepfather need to be interviewed separately. Yeah, I think that would be a great place to start. I mean, maybe he did just wander away and maybe they're just using suspicious language because there was some kind of a argument or dispute in the home and she doesn't, she feels shame around that and she doesn't want to share that part of it. That's possible. Um, I don't know about the secret service, Linda, but I do know that TBI and FBI are involved. I haven't, I don't, I'm not sure why the secret service would get involved. I don't, so I don't, I don't, I haven't heard anything about that. But if anybody has, um, if any of the mods have an independent confirmation on that, I would be glad to share it. Um, is local law kin related to or kin to Chris? I don't know, Coffee Bar Lady. I don't know. Welcome, Free Flight. Um, Hushpup says, in Summer Wells, I'm terrified by law enforcement's answers of nothing to see here. Yeah, that case just went cold. I covered that case and covered that case until all I was left with was covering the parents. And I just felt, got to a point where there was, I, I will still cover that case. If anything breaks on that case, I have a whole playlist on Summer Wells, uh, but I haven't done anything with it lately because all I'm left, the only thing to cover is, is Donnie and Candace and I'm not interested in, in covering them. I want to know what happened to her. Shrimp said, what did Sebastian have on, at Texas Roadhouse. Right. Well, they we heard in the interview that I played earlier, they said that he was wearing like a little um, black sweatshirt and black pants. So he didn't take his shoes, but he locked the door. So that almost makes me wonder if, and then Seth, Seth also was on Dave Pascal and he said, Dave Pascal asked him about that doorbell cam where supposedly Sebastian took out the trash. He said that he watched it with law enforcement. All he could see was a flashlight and a figure, and he could not say for sure whether it was Sebastian or not. So the last time we have anybody outside of the Proudfoots actually laying eyes on Sebastian is at the roadhouse, you guys. So yeah, great question, Shrimp. Leslie says, thanks for this whole share. The whole thing doesn't make sense. No, it doesn't. Yeah, the Dave, Dave Pascal last night brought up the clothing. SBD says, why don't the parents look at what clothes are at the house and deduce what he was most likely wearing? Yeah, and and I agree. I agree. Are are the clothes, and, and, and Seth literally texted that question to law enforcement, and they probably know, but they don't have, law enforcement isn't obligated to tell us. Grammy says, the mom said he went to bed in his clothes he had on. Well, I've heard that, and then I've heard black sweatshirt black pants. I don't, you know, I don't know, but that he didn't have his shoes. So I think that's interesting. So maybe was there an argument? Did he go take the trash out and get locked out of the house? You know, what happened? Cause he didn't evaporate. He didn't just poof off the face of the earth. Something happened. And his mom and Chris Proudfoot both say he wasn't on social media because that would be like another thing that we would be looking at, right, you guys? Please subscribe if you haven't and give this a thumbs up. Um, Linda says, I'm sure TBI knows more, but their record isn't stellar. 
Shrimp says, this is for Katie. Katie, if you're listening, Shrimp wants to know, why haven't you looked for your son? James says, Seth is the only one with an ironclad alibi. He was surrounded by inmates and cameras at the time. Okay, so GE is a crane operator. So this is this is Chris Proudfoot's a crane operator. Is that what you're saying? And Hush Pup is also telling me crane operator. Okay, so here we go. Chris, here we go. And Jazz also. Okay, so he, he does work in construction. He's a crane operator. Thanks for that, you guys. You guys are awesome. Um, yeah, so very, very, I'm, I'm getting a lot of people helping me out here. Thanks for that. I wasn't sure. I knew he worked in construction. I wasn't sure specifically what he did. Let's just see. Vincent says, I think Seth hired a private investigator toward the beginning, and I'm sure he's been watching Mother and Chris and the cops and letting him dig a hole for themselves in the media before questioning again. Yeah, it could be. It could be. I have more people helping me out with the crane operator. You guys are the best. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, you guys. Hey, Holly, glad you're here. Tomorrow, I'm going to be streaming the Chad Daybell case. It's a capital, that's Lori Vallow's husband. It's a capital punishment case in Idaho, just like the Brian Kohlberger case is in Idaho and is also a capital punishment case. It's I'm starting at 10.30 a.m. Eastern time. We're going to have opening statements tomorrow, 10.30. Margaret said, Chris was a heavy crane operator, heavy equipment. Thank you. S.J. Howard says his employer would know when he got there and when he left. Yeah, and he's not working there now. At least that's what I'm hearing. That's alleged. Lori Wooden said, should be cameras all over Chris Proudfoot's job site. Why wouldn't he be begging to see that footage or get it out to clear him? Great question. Linda says, after the first week, they went on dozens of podcasts and YouTube shows, only it was more about saving their reputation and not finding Sebastian. Well, that just breaks my heart to hear that. Risa Simpson says, after a certain time, the police looks at other possibilities. And when they do, they don't want the parents to know just in case they suspect foul play. And the police don't let us know everything. Great point. Great point. Janine says the Secret Service does geofencing and digital analysis. Yeah, I think technology is going to play a huge role in this and all of these cases moving forward. And geofencing, um, for those of you that don't know, that's um, something that a lot of stores are utilizing. That that uh, it basically when you it, it you're when you're when you enter a store, your cell phone is offered by the router of the store. Um, to link in to like the coffee shop or the hospital or something like that. And they get a record of your cell phone. They can learn a lot of stuff about you guys from that. So yeah, I think if he has any apps on his phone, that could help too. Thank you. Roxy says the last press conference mentioned secret service. Very interesting. Carol Mary says, I feel the same way if they're not searching Concern putting flyers, going on vacation, moving out of the house. They know where he is, and that's why they're not concerned. Yeah, there's nothing new on the Summer Wells case. If there is, I'll be all over it. Yeah, justice for the kids. And this is Autism Awareness Month. So, yeah, really important. Brenda says the Secret Service is involved. I also hear and saw this on an interview with law enforcement. Thanks for that. All right, let's continue on with this interview wife and the biological father took one exact words that's what he said okay but seth rogers this is sebastian's dad his bio dad sebastian uh, seth i don't understand that because he told me he would take a polygraph if i set it up i set it up i went through a lot of hoops to get it set up one convenient to him in the area where he says he's working so this is seth rogers this is sebastian's real father I don't know why we're calling him bio dad. I'm just going to say real dad because I think that's more respectful. But I, but they're just trying to clarify who's stepfather and who's the biological father. I think that's all that's going on. But Nancy Grace does such a great job with this interview. Let's watch. Then he wouldn't take it and blames the TBI. So now I find out he's told other outlets he's taken one and passed. Do you know the truth? 
I don't. I really don't know. But I'll tell you what. I volunteered to take polygraph. I was told that I wasn't. I didn't need to because they have my location and whereabouts. But I still volunteered. And if somebody wants me to take one, that's something of my own free will. I haven't been told by TBI that I can't take one. Woo! So he has not been told by TBI that he cannot take it. Well, that kind of says it all, doesn't it, y'all? TBI is not telling people they can't take it. Any idea how many? Three, ten, one? Uh, <laughs> it, it probably at least three years ago. I don't understand how that turned into a CPS or Child Protective Services complaint. How were they that, alerted that, that you hit him with a belt? That did not turn. That did not turn into a CPS uh, service call. Oh, that's just not true. That is just not true. For those of you just watching, this is Nancy Grace crime online this is her youtube channel i'm already subscribed if you haven't subscribed you will want to she is the og of true crime she was doing true crime before we even called it true crime but didn't it i i i've got a lot of things i need to dissect very quickly dave mack you and i've been scouring the internet um and and speaking to various witnesses mr proudfoot tells me to my face that he hit Sebastian with a belt. This is an autistic boy, an autistic boy. Do they, at, at his level of. And what did she, he do it for? Cause he was lying. And now we've caught Chris Proudfoot in a whopper lie saying that he took a polygraph test. Linda says, I watched the recent press conference where they said the secrets were secret service was involved. I don't spread rumors. Thanks for that, Linda. But Seth said he had jeans on in film. He was seen was, was it the correct date? We don't know. Jenny says at the restaurant, Sebastian was wearing jeans and a light blue or gray long sleeve tee. So that must be Logan. What Seth is saying. So on the footage, the last footage that we have of Sebastian, he's wearing jeans and a light gray or blue long sleeved t-shirt. But at that night he was wearing black sweatshirt, black sweatpants. So, so glad you guys are here. Um, if you haven't subscribed, please do. And I just do want to say thank you to our uh, to Jane J, without you guys' support, we could not do this ch channel. To our producers, George Brown and Jazz, and for Amber. And to our awesome channel members. I'm not ending, I'm just th saying thank you. Really grateful for you guys. If you guys would like to have a check mark by your name, uh, the channel member, the join button is next to the subscribe button. By the way, subscribing is free and it helps me out a lot. Please consider subscribing. And give this video a thumbs up. So I am really grateful because the channel memberships keep the channel going. And I also want to say thank you for your super chats, your PayPals, your gratitude. This is not just from one thing. This is from an ungifted memberships from Jane J. Jane J and N Jazz. So thank you so much, you guys. It helps whoops keep the channel going. I really appreciate you guys. All right, let's get back to some of the comments because we have I do want to take some of your comments. Tomorrow we're going to be starting the Chad Daybell case. Let me get to a picture of Sebastian on this. I do want to like keep his picture up there in case there's somebody new joining in. I don't like the snake one. There. Oh, I love that. That's cute. Let me see if I have one that's, let me see. There we go. That, what a cutie. He is such a cutie. Okay. So that is Sebastian Rogers. Um, he is just 15 years old. He disappeared from inside his own home. Um, we have a lot of huge red flags. 
And we have a lot of things that make Sebastian at a higher risk for something happening to him. One, we have a stepfather that was living in the home that had a history of having CPS involved. Um, so CPS, that's number two, having been involved with this particular stepfather is another big risk factor. Another big red flag risk factor, whatever you want to call it, is that Katie Proudfoot, Sebastian's mom, did not speak out right away. It took her weeks. And then when she did come out, she wouldn't go on camera. Uh, four, the stepfather seems to be combative and he seems to enjoy confrontation. Five, Sebastian is special needs. He has autism. April is Autism Awareness Month. Six, the mother and stepfather both left the house. They moved away while Sebastian is missing. And then seven, we have this bizarre statement from Chris Proudfoot about not taking a polygraph, being told by TBI he doesn't have to take a polygraph. Nancy Grace sets up the polygraph. And then he says, TBI told them not to take the polygraph. And then he says goes on a different show and says that he already took the polygraph. Uh, very, very, very concerning. Those seven big red flags. So was there some type of altercation in the house leading up to Sebastian's disappearance? Why hasn't stepfather Chris Proudfoot been home? Why wasn't he home for the entire month of February? Was he avoiding having to deal with a special needs child? I mean, this would, it is harder to have a child with special needs and being a step parent can be hard no matter what. So was he avoiding it? You know, did Sebastian's mom, Katie feel pressure in her marriage with Chris Proudfoot in relation to Sebastian and the fact that he had special needs? Was this impacting the fact that her husband wasn't coming home? Did this raise tensions in the home and cause some kind of an argument or altercation. So if Sebastian did exit the home, who locked the door? Did Sebastian really walk out of the house without his shoes on? Or was there some kind of an argument? Sebastian walked out and, so, and Katie locked the door behind him. Did he walk out to take the trash out in bare feet? And Katie didn't realize he was out there and locked the door behind him. Is that possible? Was there, but then if that's possible, why not go on camera? Was there some kind of argument that she decided she was going to teach Sebastian a lesson? Did she feel pressure from Chris Proudfoot to do something about Sebastian's behavior? Because again, why wasn't Chris Proudfoot coming home for the month of February? He was only three and a half hours away. And most parents who travel from work for work come home on the weekends. Yet, according to their interview with Nancy Grace, Chris Proudfoot was not at home for the entire month of February. So what was going on in their marriage? Was Katie feeling any pressure in regards to Sebastian? And did this end up into something catastrophic going on? What do you guys think? Maria says, I don't believe Sebastian threw out the trash because two trash men had to pick it up. It was heavy. I doubt if he could carry a heavy load of trash. They never, they claim was heavier than usual. Very interesting, Maria. Thank you. This is why I love reading your comments, you guys. You guys are, leave, I have the smartest, smartest subscribers. Smartest subscribers. All right. Welcome, Leslie, on becoming a channel member. Hush Pup gifted 10 reporter room memberships. Oh my gosh. Thank you so much. That is so generous of you, Hush Pup. Thank you so much for that. That's, that's really, really nice. So you guys are, some of you guys are going to get some new memberships and I do see some new members. Linda Marks got it. Wow. So nice, you guys. That was really generous. Hush Pup, very, very generous. And then we have Nickel for a Pickle. I want a refund, a.k.a. retired nanny did a $5 super chat. I wonder if Katie always took selfies and was that taken that night? Hmm, great question. What does the Texas Roadhouse show? Yeah, we need to, we want to see that video footage and I'm sure that we will. Thank you so much for the super chat. I really appreciate you. Uh, you guys are very, very 
generous. And for those of you that just got new channel memberships, I'm so happy for you guys. Oh, Holly got one. Leslie says, my, my spell check hates me. <laughs> oh, no. And Jess says, I think he was banned being in the same house with Sebastian. You think Chris Proudfoot was banned? Oh, wow. So do you think Katie told Chris Proudfoot he couldn't come home? Very interesting. Janine said Sebastian had the code for the front door. So I don't think she could accidentally lock him out. Thanks for that. Grammy says the poor boy and his dad is trying so hard to find him. Breaks my heart. Holly says, sorry, I'm late. I was serving the fam lunch. Hey, that sounds, that sounds really nice. Congrats to all our new channel members. We're so happy to have you guys. So tomorrow we're going to be starting the Chad Daybell case. You guys should come and bring your check marks into the chat. Love to have you guys. Linda says, could also be Sebastian had to do what Chris Proudfoot recommended on TV. If he doesn't clean his room, throw out his stuff, maybe they made him throw it out. Interesting. Hush Papa saying, my pleasure. Yeah, that was like, you guys are so nice. That was really, really nice. I love having the channel members. We do, you guys should go through. We have members only live streams. Um, feel free to go through those. Yeah, very nice. Nickel for a pickle says, it was said that their marriage was in trouble. I believe you because I think it's very strange that he would not come home for a whole month. To me, that doesn't say loving, close family man that's anxious to get home to his wife and his stepson. Elaine says, I need one. <laughs> I think how the, the gifts are done is, um, I think you just are given, oh my gosh, Enjaz just gifted five memberships. Wow, you guys. Thank you so much, Enjaz. So awesome. I think how the memberships, Enjaz will be given a list of people to choose from. I don't think she can just pick anybody that she wants. I think that's how it works. But thank you so much, Enjaz. That's so nice of you. So hopefully you guys will get... Uh, We'll have some nice brand new channel members for tomorrow for our uh, Chad Daybell coverage. And also, yeah, thanks for reminding me, Mike. I almost forgot. Let me see. Mike's reminding me, Brother Mike. Check out our Facebook group. Yeah, Reporter Room has a group on Facebook. And we have a channel members only side chat. You guys should come and be part of it. It's uh, linked in the description. Or you can just go to Facebook and type in Reporter Room. And type in Sebastian Rogers or Chad Daybell and it should pop up for you. Yeah, people are so happy to have these. Chris said Sebastian wasn't allowed to be at the house when he got get custody of her because Sebastian might. Oh. It, when you're saying her, are you talking about his daughter? Very interesting. And everybody's thinking you guys. Very, very nice. You guys are so nice. Grammy Love says, I think the police know more than they're telling. I think you're right, Grammy Love. I think they do know more than what they're letting us know. I agree. I agree with that. Escape says the computer picks the recipients. Oh, okay. So it's it's completely random. I, I knew they didn't have like totally a say-so. Because somebody was asking me about it the other day on Facebook, and I didn't know because uh, I wasn't really sure. But now we know. So, Dolwyn is thanking you. So, yeah, thank you so much for H to Hushbup and to Enjaz for gifting all those memberships. We're going to have 15 very happy people who now have check marks next to their name. And after you're a channel member for two months, your check mark goes from green to red to blue. And then it stays blue. Hushbuck says, I'm sorry about his daughter. Yeah, that's really sad. Logan says, since the child services was there in January, Chris left to stay in the camper. Was he supposed to be in the same house as Sebastian? Seth said, "Child, so Chris Proudfoot told him that Katie Proudfoot needed to get herself together, which is what he wanted Seth to do. Very interesting. 
and lots of appreciation to NJAZ and to Hush Pup for the gifted memberships. I'm getting, you guys can see all the thank yous. So nice. Grace says, Seth is referring to Nina's daughter. Thanks for that. I wasn't sure who the she was, if it was uh, maybe a child that Chris Proudfoot had, because my understanding, he's been married before a few times. Grammy Love says, I hate to say, but I think now they're looking for his remains and not missing. They have not said it, but sadly, that's what it looks like. Do you think that's why they went to go in to search that landfill? Thank you so much for the super sticker, Holly. Wow, so nice. I really appreciate that very, very much. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much. And we're going to have, this Chad Daybell trial is going to be 10 weeks long. So we're going to be going live every weekday for 10 weeks on this case. It's going to be absolutely awesome. So bring your channel memberships and come on in. I'm going to, of course, continue to cover the Sebastian Rogers case and the Idaho 4 case. Um, Nickel says, on NG, Nancy Grace, look, let me, on NG, Nancy Grace, KP was asked what, Katie Proudfoot was asked what time she went to bed. Chris said they go to bed at the same time. Katie quickly said Chris Proudfoot wasn't there. Whoa, that's interesting. And that, that kind of goes back to like what I thought too, which is what, why is he answering for her when she was asked in that March 7th interview that I played earlier? Why was he answering for her about, about the, the, what he was wearing? Why not let Katie take that question? Linda says, interesting, according to Seth, Chris Proudfoot worked on Katie Proudfoot so Sebastian could stay with Seth permanently. Wow, it's too bad that that didn't happen sooner, you guys. I just wonder if some, there was some tension in the house and it, it, it just boiled over. Did Sebastian run out? Did he get locked out? I don't know, you guys. It's, it's really, really sad. Kathy says, doors locked, but no one's there. Yeah, doors unlocked, but no one's there. I mean... I can't believe she left the house to and, and, and moved away while her son is missing. That's just such a big red flag. Grace says, I'm so excited for the truth to be revealed. I am too. And Jess says, I think, think so too. It's sad. Holly says, I can't find where to gift. <laughs> so I bought her a coffee. I'll, I'll enjoy the coffee. Thank you, Holly. I really appreciate that. I'm a big coffee drinker. Roger says she acts very timid around him. She does, doesn't she? Logan said Chris Proudfoot is taking the brunt of this. If the marriage is on the rocks, why would he or his family cover for her? Yeah, great question. You're right. Maybe it wasn't, maybe he wasn't there and maybe just he's trying to defend her. I don't know. Janine said, Chris also said if Sebastian would have went out the window, quote, we would have heard it. Oh, that's a good statement analysis catch, Janine. Really good. Holly says, good question to you, Logan. Hush Puppy said, Chris is a terrible in a terrible custody battle for his daughter. That would make me think whatever happened was accidental. I don't believe he would have risked the custody case. Great point, Hush Pup. Risa says, it's what my uncle, who is a detective, told me. Thanks for that. That's if we ever find out the truth. Oh, I think we're going to find out. There's so many eyes on this case. There's so much publicity on this case. Lisa says, my husband is a tower crane operator. All cranes are equipped with hour meters. Oh, wow. That's great to know. Thanks, Lisa. Linda says, love is blind. Yeah, it is. Good point. And Jazz says, your uncle would know being a professional. Good point, Hush Pup. That's from Holly. And Jazz says, hello to Linda. Linda says, if something took place, I don't think it was planned because he's fighting for custody right now. Very, very interesting. And Holly just says, the chat is so awesome and respectful. Yes, 
We have a great chat. I hope you guys will join me at 1030 tomorrow for the Chad Daybell case. Come join me in the top chat. Hang out. This, this trial is going to be absolutely bonkers. It's going to be very, very interesting. I think Chad Daybell is going to throw Lori Vallow under the bus and back over her tomorrow. And we have opening statement. So I, I'm, I'm expecting fireworks tomorrow. And that's 1030 Eastern time here on Reporter Room. And just as welcome to everybody in chat. We're so glad you're here. Yeah, if you haven't subscribed, please do like, share, and leave a comment. Well, I think I'm going to leave it there, you guys, because we do have the Chad Daybell case in the morning, and I just got over a chest infection, so I want to just stay in good health. So 10.30 Eastern time tomorrow, and we're going to be watching the Chad Daybell case. Come hang out. And I don't talk during the actual trial. I hate it when people are talking over. So I like to just watch um, quietly, but I will be typing back and forth with you guys in the top chat and I'll be showing your top chat comments on the air. So please subscribe and I will see you tomorrow at 1030 for the Chad Daybell trial in Idaho, a capital punishment case.